Happy Tuesday. This is a teach-in for Occupy Penn State. My name is Kevin May, and I'm a student here, a sophomore. And this teach-in is an interactive exercise. It's called The Tale of the Two Trees. And it's, a, it's an interactive story. So would anyone here like to help me with this story by drawing on the board as we do it? Sure. I'd like to help. Yeah. Awesome. So these are the magic markers. Um, let's first just divide this in half. But uh, basically the first tree is going to be right here. And you want to have a, a general. We're going to be doing a story here where we're identifying these two different trees. And um, so Jarek is going to be our helper by using these magic markers. So if you could please draw a tree, a tree with a lot of space for branches and a lot of space for roots. Um, and you can use cool colors if you want. So basically all of us are participants in this story and we're all sitting in a backyard looking at these two big trees. And so really skinny trees with lots of space for branches. And, and labels on the branches. We're gonna label the branches. So basically, and we can draw it with like no details. Oh. Kind of fast. Just like bam, bam. Just lots of branches. Yeah. And so this first tree that we're all looking at is dying, and a lot of us are getting really scared that all the flowers and the and the branches are starting to whittle away and die. And it's looking really decrepit and, and nasty. Um, so what these what these different and if you could draw some little flowers on the edge of those okay. the flowers are falling off so these flowers represent the biggest problems facing humanity today so hello um, so Hannah what is one of the biggest problems facing humanity today in fact what is the biggest problem facing humanity today just shout it out. What is it? Selfishness. All right. So can you write selfishness on there, please? So the, the first the first broken branch represents selfishness. That's the biggest problem facing humanity, according to Hannah. Who who else thinks they know the biggest problem facing humanity? What is it? Separation. Separation. All right. Can you write that, please? So, what's the, what's the biggest problem facing humanity, Bernadette? You've been in here, grief. Okay, so Bernadette's been in here all week. She thinks the biggest problem is grief. All, all these two weeks we've been in the hub. All right, can you write grief, please? You can just leave open space for labels now. Maybe if we can use orange. <laughs> so, anybody else? What do you think the largest problem facing humanity? If we don't save this problem, it, nothing else will matter. What's it? Apathy. Apathy. Okay, so so we're in this backyard. You know, we're eating our we're eating our uh, peanut butter and, and apples that we brought over here, and we're all looking at this tree and we're noticing that it's dying. But all of us are staring at different branches, and these different branches. Each of us is kind of focused on that one, saying that's the biggest problem. So, what's another problem? Or what do you think the biggest problem is? Ignorance. All right. Anybody else? What about the financial system, all these things that Occupy is talking about? Don't those come into play? Or, or are those outgrowths of these things? doing the twinkles, that means you agreed. So, so usually, if you could now draw some roots down here. So, perhaps the reason why this tree in the backyard that we're all staring at is dying and has all these nasty, falling apart branches is really because the, the roots are messed up and we're not having some healthy soil down there. So what do you guys think the root of these issues is? Just shout it out. 
come on. Social pressures. All right, can you write that, please? Somebody who hasn't spoken yet. If you want to name a branch also, that would help, because it's good to have a lot of different branches. Because if you look at, at, our, at our country or the news, we're constantly being streamed at these, these huge problems facing humanity, and that's what these, all these different leaves represent. So, like, climate change, perhaps. Let's put that up there. Yeah. It seems like a lot of people these days are focused on climate change, saying that is the biggest problem. If we don't solve climate change, we're going to get our oceans drowning us, and all our financial system won't matter at all. You know? Inequality. Inequality. So is inequality here or down here? Or both? It could be like a branch and a, a root. It could represent both. I think it might be a root. Uh, a root. So inequality. So maybe if we didn't have inequality, then we would not have as much greed, separation, and ignorance. <coughs> this is an interactive story. We're creating this together. I'm just kind of standing here. So what do you guys think another root problem of, of all these issues is? Lack of, lack of consistent education. Just education. Education. Let's write it down. So maybe if we had some education, we wouldn't have so many problems. We're in a university, so we've got to get that one going. All right, so can somebody please name, what's what's another thing that television always talks about, like the biggest problem facing humanity? Terror. Terror? Okay. Let's, let's put it up there. Yeah. So, so a lot of people are staring at this tree in the backyard, and they're like, we need to stop the terror. We need a war on terror. What is terror? Can you define terror? Isn't that isn't that those cards, those terror cards? <laughs> I'd say terror. I'm just by killing other people for your own belief. Unjustified killing for your own belief. Okay. I like that that last word, belief. Um, all right. So what's one more thing that the news? How about one of you with the camera? What is the news constantly telling us the biggest problem? You're in the backyard too. This is an interactive story. <laughs> We're all staring at this tree together. Dead? That's a good one. Alright, so one of the biggest things facing humanity is debt. But then the other people staring at the climate change are like, debt doesn't even exist. We're going to be fucking underwater, you know? Like, <laughs> people are freaking out about all these different issues, and they're all trying to get each other to, to, to say, here, focus on this branch, you know? Look at this leaf right here. We don't... They're, like, each, like, yanking each other's head, like, look at this one. Look at that one. No, this is the one. But I feel if we, if we look down at the roots, then maybe we can kind of reduce all these things. There's a famous quote from Waldo Emerson, um, an author, who says, one strike at the root equals a thousand at the branches. So maybe if we just get down to the root of these destructive branches, we can figure this out. So what do you guys think is the root, is the root cause of humanity's biggest problems? What about fear? Fear, let's put it down there. Do you know what fear is an acronym for? Um, I think I have, but... Does anyone here know that fear is an acronym, just like SCUBA? <coughs> it stands for False Expectations Appearing Real. Can you write that on there? So maybe if we didn't have so much fear, then it, we wouldn't have all these detrimental branches. What's what's another one? What do people think is the root of these problems? I don't know how to say it, but like our economy is based on material things and spending money on material things. So like even maybe like 
waste water. So like a non economic yeah. growth equals waste water. I don't know. Something like that. Okay, so economic system. Yeah. Hello. What do you think the biggest problem facing humanity is today? Greed? Greed? Uh, we got that up there. That wait, 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 is this a root? Well, economic. the economic thing, you said that was a root. A lot of the roots and the branches could could trade places sometimes. Um, so our new friend who just joined us in the backyard, we're all standing at the, we're all staring at these two trees. The second tree hasn't come into existence yet. Um, but this tree is dying, and we're all staring at these different branches, noticing different parts are falling apart. We're all freaking out, because this is our favorite tree, and if it dies, then we're not going to be able to have these flowers that are so important to us. And so, so far, the biggest problems facing humanity are debt, selfishness, separation, greed, ignorance, apathy, climate change, and terror. Does that sound like a good summary? We leaving anything out. And so the root of all those things is economics, education, inequality, <coughs> fear, social pressures, and fear stands for false expectations appearing real. <coughs> we leaving anything out, Hannah. What are we leaving out from this tree? How could you summarize it to an alien visiting our planet? Cultural behaviors. 
we we used a different word for the B. Can anyone guess another B word? Cultural <coughs> biases. That's very close. There we go. Cultural beliefs. So, can you write at the very bottom of there, cultural beliefs? Can I like write it right here? Sure, sure. Maybe in orange. So, we feel that that if you if you really get to the root of it, most of our problems come from some sort of cultural belief that then leads to the next thing, which then leads to the next thing. And so, perhaps if we if we change our soil of cultural beliefs and get some new some new roots growing in there, then we could grow a new tree. So can you start drawing a similar skinny new tree with roots and branches, please? So, the soil on this tree you can see is obviously sponsored by Monsanto and has all sorts of <laughs> chemical fertilizers in there and hydrochloric, what's you, you name it, polysorbate 19 and uh, because it's growing this horribly, this horrible tree that we're all staring at and noticing the dysfunction. So the next, the next tree is going to be grown with healthy, fresh, organic, worm-filled compost. How's that sound? All right. So what are some of the, what are some of the cultural beliefs that would be a part of that soil that you guys would like to see? Sustainability. Sustainability. All right. Can you write that as one of the fruits, please? Yes. Equality. Equality. Tolerance. <coughs> Equality and tolerance are going to be some of the new soil elements in this new tree. Somebody else. Yes. How about love instead of love? How about both? How about both? <laughs> this is our tree. I mean, we're, we're in the backyard. We're going to be the ones growing this tree. So we can choose what cultural beliefs we want to include. So somebody else, what are some alternatives to these ones or, or uh, things we could swap? Rationality. Rationality. That sounds good. So perhaps right now our, our root structure is a little bit irrational. And in the new tree that we're all helping to grow, we will have some rationality. Somebody else? Participation? Participation. I like that. What about simplicity instead of complexity? Sounds good. Simplicity instead of complexity. How about somebody from way out there? John! <coughs> John! What sort of cultural belief do you want to include in the new paradigm? All right, he doesn't know. What would you like to see in, in, a, in a more beautiful world? Like, if, if you could add one thing to our world, what would you add? Like, what do you want to see in an ideal world? Okay, so he's in the backyard too, and he is, he is saying that less meat eating, that's kind of a manifestation of these cultural beliefs. So could you write that up there, maybe in orange? Yeah. All right, so now that we have this new belief system, does anyone want to add something to our new healthy organic soil, which is going to grow this nourishing tree? Alternative energy. So is that, is that a manifestation or a gene? <coughs> so, green energy. What's an example of green energy? Solar. Geothermal. Wind by light. Solar. So, geothermal, solar, and wind power are going to be manifestations of our new tree. So, what are some alternatives that instead of these destructive, crippling, nasty branches, we could have some vibrant, 
beautiful flowers and apples growing from this tree. Altruism. Altruism. Beautiful. Democracy. Democracy. Unity. Unity. Very nice. We gotta get excited about this. This is our new tree, all right? What do you guys wanna see when you walk out of the hub? What's gonna be happening in an ideal world? Knowledge. Knowledge. Shablam! Somebody else. What do you wanna see in the world? Stronger community. Stronger community, right on. What, what's, um, what's an alternative to some of these, maybe? Kids gonna do all day. What are kids gonna be up to in this new 
on this new tree, instead of kids that are filled with terror and ignorance and debt and selfishness, what are we going to have? Exploration. Exploration. More active schooling. I know they're slowly cutting out recess for children. More, more recess. Let's do it. <laughs> more play. More yeah. play. Well, more activism. <laughs> more activism. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Hula hooping over Halo. That's a good T-shirt. Yeah. I like to say uh, less TV, more real life. <laughs> What else do you guys want to see? Yes, less Marcellus shale, more, more fresh, fresh kale. Huh. I want to see clean food. Clean food. Clean food. Drinkable, potable water for everyone. Fresh water. Fresh water for every single person on the planet. We're going to stop using half our water supply for golf courses and put it towards drinking water. How about that? But we can also figure out a way to have golf courses if people want golf courses because we're smart people. We can do that. Yeah. I think, and, and that that thing I just mentioned goes along with a value that I want to see, which is abundance. Believing that we do have abundance and tapping into that abundance and not wasting things. Um, so can you write abundance as a new as a new cultural beliefs? Because as I mentioned before, yes, please. Um, throughout our, our bicycle journey, our general overview was that a lot of these things really boil down to cultural beliefs. So if we shift our cultural beliefs, then we can have some new things coming out of that. Yes. Efficiency with the resources we do have left. We can use them wisely. So wise use of resources. Any other thoughts permeating your brain? Any any feedback since we're all sitting here in the backyard? You want to add anything to this? Well, we're, we're, we're wondering what you want to see in the world. Something you could add if I gave you a chance. Fruit. Sounds good. You know, no, we don't have that. Our, our new tree is, is very untruthful at this point. Transparency. Okay. So is that a root or a branch? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Is that a, that a root value or is that a manifestation? <laughs> it's, it could count as a root and a, and a thing. It's basically a new a new belief system that everyone walks around with. People value the truth. You know. Sounds good. All right. Anybody want to add anything to this? How about joy? Joy. Sounds good. <coughs> Upstairs. So this new tree, as we're sitting here in the backyard, could you write the tale of the two trees at the top, please? Because that's the title of this story. Um, so basically, to, to summarize, we're all sitting in this backyard, and... A lot of different people, and, and we we're just a fraction, but we represent all of humanity. And so many different people are staring at all these different problems saying, no, everybody, we need to change religion, and no, we need to change education. And other people are like, no, if we don't address climate change, then nothing else matters. And other people are like, well, we need to address the economic system, and all these things. But... Now we're exploring the root of these problems. And so we listed things like fear and human nature and social pressures, inequality. And I feel that you could summarize these as cultural beliefs. 
These are the things we're brought up in. We're, we're taught them at such a young age that we don't even question them. It's like you're in the matrix constantly, so you can't even feel it or smell it. It's just always around you. And uh, that's what I feel like a lot of these things. We think people are apathetic, but it's because they're surrounded by these cultural beliefs. They have these pairs of what I call perceptual spectacles on all the time. And they're just walking around with these glasses that their parents put on them and they're like, that's just how they see the world. You can't really blame them for it because that's just what they grew up in. But now through Occupy and through a lot of other things, we're beginning to take off these cultural beliefs and question them. I see this whole process here as we've been questioning our cultural beliefs and our whole system. And uh, so now, as we're sitting here in the backyard, we're, we're discovering we can create new cultural beliefs, alternatives to the ones we have now. So some of these include, Jared, do you want to shout them out? Down here. Yeah. yeah. Shout Simplicity. them out to the world. Simplicity, love, security, rationality, abundance, participation, efficiency, sustainability, equality, Yes. Yes. And so, and so, from those new cultural beliefs, we are going to manifest here. How about somebody else want to shout it out to the world? Things we want to know what your manifestations are. So please, however you can, comment, give us feedback on this because we in this backyard are also you in the backyard staring at these two trees. So some of these things, does anyone want to come up and read these? You look like you do. Come on. Alright. Um, you gotta get excited. These are the things you want to see in the world. Adventure and dancing. Adventure, dancing. Knowledge. The people, on, the people online can't see you. Green energy and democracy and unity and activism and fresh water for everyone. More recess and less meat. And more art. And empathy over apathy. And joy. Joy. Yes. Very important things to include. And there are many more things that we can create <laughs> as we as we move into this new value system that I feel we are establishing here at Occupy Penn State. We are, we are building community. We are having equality in our general assemblies. We are speaking our truth. In fact, I'll be facilitating a truth circle tonight at 10 p.m. You're all invited to come because I feel we can work on building this new tree right now. We don't have to wait until these problems are over. We can start building the new tree as the old tree is falling apart. And so I feel if we each kind of have this understanding, then it's very empowering because, uh, okay, so let's just set it down. So I feel that once, once we kind of have this conceptualization, as Ricky put it, it's very empowering because you can see that um, there's there's work there's valuable work to be done in many different areas, and I feel that once we kind of know the root of the problem, then then you can stop putting putting band aids on your on your wounds. You know you know what the root is, and then you can deal with it. You can get that Monsanto soil out of out of the picture and you can put in some fresh soil and know that your new tree is gonna grow a lot better than this tree. And uh, I feel that it's up to each of us to find our own niche within this, within this ecosystem where we feel we can best contribute. You know, some people might be really good at, um, at adding art. You know, some people are just artists, they wanna do that, but other people are gonna work on a new economic system, things like that. Other people are gonna do green energy with Bernadette. And uh, other people are gonna have perfect medicine with Jarek. And other people can 
have truth with our wonderful photographer here. So I feel we each have have a branch that we can focus on, and uh, we're all in this backyard together working on creating this new tree and also addressing this this dysfunctional tree that we're all so concerned with. So thank you for participating in this interactive story. I hope it was enjoyable. Thank you for watching. And we can continue this discussion and process. Uh, I know the General Assembly is coming up soon. Does anyone have any questions or comments or things that are on your mind? So where do cultural beliefs come from? They come from our culture. I don't know. I don't have the answer. We're in the backyard together. I'm just facilitating this process. But but you could say that they come from our... I think culture is like the, the easiest way to summarize it, which is defined as like the sum total of your, of your ideas, your values, your technology, your, um, your social structure. Yeah, but where does all that stuff come from? Well, just, just people reacting to uh, the world in, around them. It's just a collection of people's reactions to the world around them. Yeah, but what's the, what's the source? So the question is, what is the source of cultural beliefs? Cultural beliefs are inherent as you react to things around you in nature, other things will develop, and eventually you develop the culture. Being here is a culture. So if we were to analyze an indigenous culture in the rainforest compared to Ohio, so a town in Ohio, how would those, what sort of belief systems would be different? So the culture, cultural beliefs are going to change. What's the source of that change? The people. The people, the, the media, taking back the media. I mean, I feel that a big part of cultural beliefs is what we're fed by our environment. So the TV is constantly telling us what to believe. And most of the things from television are so... Um, ubiquitous that we don't even question them, you know, like they include all their, all of our cultural beliefs are built into what they're saying. 
So if, you, if you're constantly watching TV, then it's like you're not questioning these basic cultural beliefs. Like they might say, uh, how are we going to make the economy grow next year? Implicit in that is that the economy is supposed to grow or is able to grow infinitely on our finite planet. You know, so I feel it's our job to, to take back the media to have alternative things that are surrounding us, you know, like just creating new culture is, I feel, the most important thing we can do. Just creating new, creating new alternatives, you know, like if, if McDonald's, if you, if you don't like McDonald's, you realize that it gave you cancer, um, and you're really upset that you've eaten McDonald's for the last 50 years, I feel you have the, the possibility of going there and like banging on the windows being like, I hate you McDonald's, you know, I'm going to stand outside here every day with signs that show all your calorie count and your, and your factory farms and everything, you could do that, or you could put all your energy into creating an alternative to McDonald's a health food store or a garden or something like that and and then every morning you wake up and you just put energy into this garden this health food store and I feel if you do something like that it will draw customers away from McDonald's and they'll be like wow why don't why haven't we been growing our own food all along and um, and just seeing that there's a, a much better alternative I personally that's the that's the solution that I feel. I do think that protesting and and like fighting this current system is is part of the picture, but we also need to be building an alternative and a new thing because we can't we can't like be protesting McDonald's if we're still eating there every day, you know. like to add something what would you uh, like to see in the world if somebody gave you a check for a million dollars right now we would see perfect medicine adventure dancing more recess more art more volunteering more play unity fresh water dem democracy altruism green energy less meat and knowledge no hunger no hunger I'll add that Anything else? Basically, uh, what we're doing here is an interactive story where we're all sitting in this backyard looking at these two trees. And this tree is dying, as you can see by these things falling off. And there's and all of us are focusing on different different branches of this tree which represent the biggest problems in our world. And, uh, and then we decided, we looked down at the roots and the soil of this dying tree and came up with all these different roots, which could be summarized as cultural beliefs. And then we said, well, maybe we can switch the soil and uh, get some new cultural beliefs. And then so we listed all those new values, which will then grow this beautiful blossoming, flowering tree. Cool. Would you like to add anything to it? Yeah, I'd like to take some of the human nature on the left and put it on the right, because human nature is also positive. I like it. <laughs> yeah. about empowerment <laughs> again <laughs> as a value or as a, as a link from the left to the right okay i don't know if we can add this empowerment <laughs> take luck of where you were born out of the equation 
Nice. So that would be a value for the one. Yeah, we would. Somebody gave you a check for a million dollars. Besides knowledge, empathy, <coughs> perfect medicine, adventure, play. More affordable housing. I like it. Going along with that, I would like to see natural building. On the on, on the bike trip across America, we visited a lot of places where people had built their own homes of natural materials. It's extremely inspiring to see that. And it's completely different than a than a regular house. Like it's it's as different as I don't even know <coughs> what a comparison is. It's the difference between water and coffee is like is how different a, a hand built home and a uh, and a manufactured cookie cutter house is it's just completely different. So or, I'm gonna write natural building. Actually, yeah, we could actually combine the two. Affordable no, natural building, which yeah, yeah, and you can build a a, a cob house, which is a natural thing. People have built them for around a thousand dollars. A solid home. Wow. Yeah. That's really nice. Wow. system I would like to invite us all into a circle here so please join me in a circle to close this tale of two trees since we're here in the backyard enjoying this fine pub day creating a new culture and a big part of creating new culture is documenting it as we're doing it and thus spreading it to the world saying hey this is what we're doing this is what we're creating. Okay. Would you like to join us? I would like to, but I'd like to... Take your circle. I can send them to you. Okay. Would you like to join us in the circle? <laughs> you still got the cap on, brother. Ricky, you still got the cap on. <laughs> so would anyone like to share anything about this exercise? Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday.